Hello makers and creatives. Welcome to Share Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris. And today I wanted to share with you a sew along as well as a pattern review for the Pippi Pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. So we're gonna start off with the sew along and then stay tuned because at the end of the video, I will go through a pattern review. So let's get started. So prepping your fabric to begin sewing. So we are going to stay stitch the curved edges on the bib front as well as the bib lining so that it doesn't stretch out of place. Next, you're going to apply interfacing to all of the pieces that are listed on there as well as placing it over where the buttonholes are going on the wrong side of the bib. We're going to start with the button band. So first we are going to serge the edges of that and transfer all of the markings. And then we are going to place the lining and the bib band together, right sides together, pin along here, and then we're just going to stitch along the edge. And then we're going to clip along the curves. And in the center here, I like to do a little triangle just to create a little bit more movement in the fabric going to turn that right side out and then we're going to press this and when we do press this we are going to want to be careful to roll the fabric slightly towards the side of the lining so it doesn't peek through when you see it on the other end and then we're going to top stitch along the edge of that and I've just marked also where the buttons are going to be placed now we're going to move on to the straps so with the straps, I am just putting in some tailor tacks because I am using a wool fabric. The markings with chalk or a water soluble marker aren't going to show up as well and might rub off, especially when we're turning the straps. So we are just going to place them right sides together and we're going to pin along the long side of these straps and we're going to stitch all the way down and you're going to leave the two short ends open. And then we are going to take it over and turn it. Don't forget to clip the bottom curve just so you get a nice point on the end there. And I like to use a safety pin to turn them and then press them. And I've top stitched all around the edge of the straps. Now moving on to the pockets. So we are going to place the pocket front and lining right sides together and we are going to pin along the perimeter of the pocket and then we're going to stitch along both of the long curved edges leaving the two edges open one at the top and one at the side we're going to clip those curves so that we can turn it and it will turn nicely and then we are going to turn it right side out which is easily done through those two open ends and then we're going to pop it on over to our ironing table and give it a nice good press and wool absolutely loves steam from the iron and this pressed just like a dream next we're going to top stitch along the top edge of the pocket and then we're going to move on to the bib so we're going to start with the darts in the front of the bib which will create some lovely shaping now to create these darts I like to transfer the markings on and then use my pin to see where the line is so I actually match up the pin and have it go through the line on the other side and when it matches up exactly I know that I'm going to be stitching exactly on the line and getting a correct dart and then you're going to back stitch at the end but when you get to the very end here you're going to lift your needle up leave some long thread tails and then you're going to tie a couple knots on the end this is to reduce bulk you never want to back stitch at the top of a dart and so once you've got those threads secure then you can clip those tails and now I've pressed the darts towards the outside and then on the lining I'm pressing the darts towards the inside that way we're reducing some of that bulk then I'm going to place them right sides together just pinning along the top and the sides and then we are going to stitch that in place leaving the bottom open so that we can turn it later 
So we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way along the perimeter here. We're going to clip the corners as well as any of the curves here. And then we're going to turn it right side out. And once again, where the buttons go, I've marked with tailor tacks, which is what you'll see those white threads there. Then we're going to take it over to the iron and we are going to press it. And just as we did on the pockets, we are going to make sure that we're rolling it slightly towards the back so that you don't see any of the lining, especially because I got a nice, fun, funky purple fabric. Now onto the skirt. So we're going to start with the pleat. So you're going to take the one pleat on the edge and move it to that middle notch that you have in here. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then you're just going to base that in place within the seam allowance. Next, we're going to place the pocket on. And so you'll see there are two notches. You're going to want to line it up with the lower of those two notches. And then there'll be a notch along the top that you will match that up to as well and get it pinned nicely in place. And you can see that I am trying to match up my pattern as best I can so that my stripes are all matched up as well. And then we're going to top stitch along just the one side here. And next, we are just going to do this dart here. And this is the dart in the back of the skirt. And it's done the exact same way as with the bib. So now that we've got the pockets on and the darts sewn in the skirt here and pressed towards the outside, we are going to pin along the side of the skirt and then stitch all the way along there. So we're going to do on the one side all the way down. And I like to serge the edges of this individually before I stitch them together, just so it lays nicely. Now on the other side where you have your double notches, that's where we're going to put the button placket. So we are not going to stitch all the way down the side here. We're actually going to start at the one notch and then going and stitching all the way down. And now we can move into the button facing here. So we've got our button facing that we had prepared and we are just going to lie this one here. And this is just the single layer of fabric and we're going to match up the notches and we are going to put it right sides together on our skirt and just stitch up. And then we're going to press it nicely. And then you're just going to baste along the top here so that it stays in place. Now we're going to grab the button facing that has the lining on it and we are going to place that right sides down. We're going to make sure that the front of the skirt is away from there and you're going to stitch just going all the way down along your seam allowance here. So this is what it'll look like and you can see that I surged that edge as well and then you're going to place both of the button plackets together and stitch along there. Next, for the waistband and the straps. So the straps do have two spots that are angled and you're just going to match them up with the notches, pin them in place, and then you're going to base them within the seam allowance so that we have them placed exactly where we need them to be. And now you'll see that there are another two notches and those are going to match up with the side of the bib, the center front of the bib, and then you will get to the other end. That will be the end of the bib as well as the end of the waistband. Right here, we're going to pin and baste these in place as well. And so we're just going to stitch all the way down, basting all of them in place. So it should look something like this when it's done. Now we're going to get the lining for the waistband and we're going to place that right sides together, going all the way across. And now when we sew this seam, this is going to be not a basting stitch, it'll be our actual seam allowance. And it'll look like this and you're going to give it a nice good press. And now we're going to attach this to our skirt front and back. So we're going to place the waistband front along the skirt and we're going to match up the notches with the side seams as well so that you are making sure that everything fits quite nicely. And I'm just going to pin this in place before I take it over to my sewing machine and get this stitched all the way around. 
And so I'm just going to stitch all of this and this is what it is going to look like once it is all done. And now you have your lining and you're going to place the lining right sides together and then you're just going to stitch down on either end to enclose those ends quite nicely. I just stitch down going all the way across on here and so this is what that looks like one thing to note is you want to fold under the seam allowance on the end before you stitch the lining down so that it is encased in that seam before you flip it over and then right here i'm just going to hand stitch that in place next is the hem and so we're just going to measure a two centimeter hem and i've surged the edges and then i'm just going to hem all around the edges here and then once that is all done, we're going to move on to the buttons on the straps. So I've already created the buttonholes here and I put the straps in and I've attached them at the area that I have marked and I've actually secured them. You can add buttonholes so that they are adjustable if you wanted to. I've got some Kleenex on here because I cut myself severely when I was doing these buttonholes. And then we're going to add the buttonholes on the top layer and the buttons on the bottom layer going down the side of the skirt as well. And this is what it looks like when it is all done. I decided to do crisscrossing on the buttons here because I think that a crisscross stitched button looks so cute. And you notice I did the button on the skirt here in the wrong direction on the very top and then I did them in the right direction on the lower three. But this is the final pinafore. I think it is so cute and I really love this button detailing and these cute pockets. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. This really is a beautiful pinafore to wear and I think I'm going to make quite a few more. So now that we have finished making the pinafore, I thought I would do a review on the pattern itself. So this was the first pattern that I've made by Jennifer Lauren Handmade, and I must say it is one of my favorite pinafores that I have done yet. Currently, I'm in a bit of a craze where I am enjoying some vintage style pinafores and I'm trying to find just the right one. And this one ticks almost all of the boxes. The only thing I wasn't sure about was the top where it has the button fasteners or if you wanted to use uh, like with overalls, the lock mechanism. And I was worried it might be a little too bulky along the top, but it really isn't and it adds a bit of character to it. I decided to use a wool coating from Minerva and I'll leave a link in the description down below as well. And it really gives a pinafore sort of a vintage feel because if you've ever had an authentic vintage dress, you know that the fabrics are a little bit thicker and a bit more voluminous. Now this is a on the lighter side wool coating and it's a wool poly blend and it fits lovely. It is a dream to sew with. I don't know if you guys have ever sewn with wool before, but it's one of my favorite fabrics because it presses into shape so nicely. Absolutely adore it. Another thing that I liked about this pinafore was the functional pockets. So I had made a, another pinafore and I'll link the video for you guys down below and a card up here where you guys can check it out. And it was from Nina Lee. Now the skirt was cute, but the pockets are very similar to the pockets that are on this one. But in that case, the pockets were so small that you couldn't really fit much in there except maybe your ID or a debit card. Whereas this has some more functional pockets and I do like the detailing that the patch pocket does give. I like the crisscross in the back for the pinafore and the pattern itself is drafted quite nicely and fits very true to size. I didn't make any adjustments in it. And I really like that on the bib portion, you do have some front darts that create some added shaping in the bust area, where I've seen other pinafores where they are just a square, which is fine if you're making a child's pinafore, but for an adult who has a bit more curves, you really need to have that shaping go into it. So I really like that attention to detail on that. The only thing that I would change is I just made a note in the pattern and it's not necessarily something I would change, but it was something that I would do. So when making the skirt 
part, because it is not a lined skirt, I would go in and finish the edges of the seams prior to sewing the skirt together on the front and the back. That way you could do Hong Kong seams or uh, if you wanted to serge those edges separately so that you could press them open and it lays nice and flat. But other than that, I really like this pattern. And in fact, my daughter saw it hanging up on my dress form and asked if she could have this exact one. So I might have to make another one for myself. Let me know your thoughts on this pattern if you've ever made it, or if you have a favorite pinafore pattern. And if it's a vintage, bonus points, because I am on the hunt for a vintage pinafore pattern. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing. Until next time, makers, let's get our sew-spiration on. Bum, bum, ba -da, ba -da, bum, bum,